This is the first time I am posting anything online about this. I am a 31 year old woman, married, and recently moved back in with my parents due to moving back to the town I grew up in. My husband and I are taking our time looking for our own place due to wanting something nice in the area and that is usually hard to find. This story takes place back in my parents' house, starting back 10 years ago. A description of the house for a bit of content. It's a two-story brick stone house in city limits, but still surrounded by nothing but woods. You have to go through a garage that leads into the kitchen with the first bedroom to your left. Past the kitchen is the main living room and to the right is the hall that is very open. In this area you will find the main dining room and two living areas, but if you continue straight you will see the staircase to your left and even further straight is my parents bedroom and bathroom. Going up to the stairs you will come to the third living area. Yes, this is a huge house. With two sets of French doors side by side that lead to the outside balcony. Going straight to the sharp left leads you to another three bedrooms and two bathrooms. This is where the story takes place. The first time I stepped foot into this house I immediately felt off. Like something just wasn't right. I felt a presence but I didn't know what or who it was. I brushed it off thinking I was just reading too much into it. I continued to feel this for the next couple of years and because of this I didn't much enjoy visiting them. My parents liked to gamble a lot back then so they would ask me to babysit my baby brother and sister one day on the weekend. My boyfriend, now husband, loved them so we would always babysit with me. The first few times I really didn't pay attention to the feeling I would get because we would be busy playing or eating with the kids. After that things kinda chilled out and we would end up watching movies until it was time for us to go to bed. Now my husband is a freak of nature. It's like he falls asleep the second his eyes are closed. Me on the other hand, it takes me forever to get comfortable enough to wind down my mind. I also don't sleep well even when I do finally get to sleep. This night was the first time I saw and heard something in this brand new house. In this room, the bed is facing the door, but not directly in front of it. With the double doors open, you can see the front of the staircase and all the way down in the hallway. As long as the light is on, that is. This night, only one of the hallway lights were on. I was laying in bed with the TV on but the volume down low so I could hear if one of the kids called me. I was almost asleep when I hear one of my siblings coming down the stairs. I open my eyes a bit and wait for them to get to the bottom, but they never do. I don't think anything of it. Close my eyes and begin to drift off again. A few minutes later, I hear again. So I open my eyes and wait, but they never get to the bottom. This time I sit up and listen. A bit spooked, but nothing I cannot handle. I get a bit nervous, but still I go check to see if there are maybe they are scared to come all the way down or something. No one is there. Confused and thinking I must be dreaming it up, I go back to bed. This time closing one of the double doors. It was a few hours later around 2.30 a.m. When I feel like someone is very near me as if they are standing next to the bed right in front of me. Usually when I open my eyes I would see the green glow of the alarm clock on the bedside table, but this time I saw nothing. It was pitch black. I couldn't even see the hallway light on the TV had turned off on its own. I felt like I couldn't move. I was awake now and scared to my bones. I was finally able to call out my husband's name loud enough to wake him. He reached over and turned on the light. And right then the scared feeling went away and I was able to move. I freaked out and started crying. I couldn't begin to explain to him what happened because even if I had, he didn't believe in those things. So I told him I was having a nightmare and asked him to go check on the kids. When he came back he said the kids were fine and got back in bed. With the light on, I was able to fall back asleep but it took me forever. 
The next day I told my mom about what had happened and that's what she told me. She had been hearing footsteps on the stairs at night and even saw someone standing by the door at times. She didn't tell anyone because she did not want to scare the kids. This is when she told me what she had done. She wanted to know what was going on in her house so she went and bought a voice recorder. One day she decided to use it and went upstairs while everyone was gone. She asked you a typical questions of who is there, what do you want, and why are you here, and then said, you have passed away and need to go into the light. You are not welcome here. The next day she decided to leave the recorder in one of the bedrooms upstairs. While it was recording for about four hours while she was out running errands, I asked if she had checked it, and to my surprise, she said she was too afraid to listen to it alone. I wanted to listen to it. Off we went to the computer, and began listening to it after it was uploaded. During the four hours she was gone, you can hear something clicking or tapping. Sounds of a drawer opening and closing, but we weren't for sure. Then we listened to the part where she was asking questions. Now you could hear a sound that resembled a fan or maybe static throughout of the whole thing. Some sounds were indistinguishable. But the one sound we did hear chilled us to the core. When she asked, what do you want, it gave us an answer. Changing my brother's name for this, the answer was Jamie. It didn't answer any questions except for that one. I cried immediately. He wasn't having night terrors for no reason. Something was there for him. Every night. We soon asked a friend to cleanse the house. For a long time, everything has been okay. My brother stopped having night terrors. My mom was able to sleep comfortably and all was good again. Until now. I have been living in this house for a month and a half. For the last three weeks, I have been seeing things everywhere, especially when I'm alone. Because of this, I won't stay alone anymore. I get the strong feeling of being watched. I have the feeling of someone pulling on my blanket at night. I think it is time for another cleanse. Oh, and just an FYI, I am the third generation on my mother's side of the family that is able to see spirits. My dad's side of the family has, in the past before I was born, practice black magic. I don't like speaking to them and won't dabble in any of the spiritual stuff most people do. I stay as far away as from it as possible, and I recommend that you do too. Even if you are careful, the experience can haunt for a long time, even after you are gone. So this is a quick update. So I'm sitting on the living room floor playing with my nephew. Mom's on the left couch and sister is on the right couch. My nephew has a toy piano that is made of cloth and can be folded up. This piano was behind us in the corner with all my nephew's other toys. We were talking and watching my nephew's attempt to walk when this piano makes a sound. It sounds like someone is pressing on the keys slowly. We stop and stare and then look at each other's shock. Then the keys are pressed rapidly until it finally shuts off on its own. Mom and I are not scared. My sister is terrified due to something happening to her last night around midnight. But that is a different story. I've always been quite adventurous, so it stands out to reason that when I had spare time alone, I would hop in my car and go exploring. I especially like finding old abandoned homes, and there are a lot of them in Colorado. My husband hated the fact that I would do this completely alone, and he was always afraid that I would get in trouble. When I saw a no trespassing sign, it was an invitation, so it's no surprise that I would often be where I wasn't supposed to be. One day, while out driving down old country roads, that I happened upon an old abandoned farmhouse, so I pulled into the driveway. There was no garage or carport, so my car was right in plain sight. This old red brick farmhouse was all boarded up, 
around the side of the house. There was an opening where one of the boards had fallen off, so I scrambled on up and crawled through. I found myself in a front bedroom. Of course it was rather dark, but there were cracks in the boards to let just enough light. You could easily maneuver through the house without too much difficulty. Imagine my surprise to find everything still in the house untouched. Near as I could tell, it had been empty since sometimes in the 60s. So it had been sitting in this condition for at least 20 years. I found this very strange that no kids had gotten inside to party nor any evidence of a homeless person, especially since this house could be easily seen from I-25, which is a major highway that goes through the heart of Denver. And this, there was an exit within walking distance to that house. Denver had a very large homeless population, just like all big cities have. The living room had all the furniture, lamps, tables, and the bedrooms all had armoires and iron beds. Everything left in the kitchen along with home canned goods, spices, dishes, everything still there. In the bedroom where I entered, there was a portable toilet, and I wondered if someone had been sick. I got a feeling that was the case. I spent hours in there just looking through pictures and postcards of the family that had lived there. There was a ton of Catholic paraphernalia too. You know, crucifixes on the walls, rosary beads and the like. It was fascinating to me and I was trying to figure out why this family had left the house this way. And I was so surprised when I came out how many hours had passed, but I chalked it up to being too involved and losing track of time. I've never won a watch, so it wasn't hard to believe this could happen. This place also wasn't far from my house, so I would go there as often as I could and wander the grounds, investigating the sheds and the outhouse. The root cellar under the house was loaded with old canned goods and rotted root vegetables. The smell, of course, after all this time was non-existent, so really it wasn't unpleasant. I kept wandering when it happened there. I did not know that the family that owned this home lived just around the corner around this time street. How I found out was they caught me there and ran me off. I watched them as they left and saw where they went. Now when I would go back, I'd look to see if they were home before I'd go in. So week after week, month after month, I would go back. There was so much to explore. Time after time they would catch me there again and again and always run me off. I always wondered why they never called the police on me, but they never did. I think they knew I was being haunted, although I was not aware of this at the time. Later on after, I had been exploring for a number of months. I began to find myself there was no recollection as to how or when I had gotten there. But every time I went in, hours and hours would go by, and every time I came out I always was surprised at how much time had passed. I would think I was in there about two hours, but would find at least six hours had passed and it was dusk. It would begin to get dark and I would have to leave because, of course, there was no electricity. I was completely taken over and got into my mind that I wanted to buy this house. So I talked to my husband about it, never revealing to him that I had been going there. I kept it a secret from everyone, even my best friend. I did some research and tried to find out anything I could about it. I did find out it was built in 1910, but could get no other information about it. I even tried to talk to the people that owned the house, but they would never tell me anything at all and would just tell me to leave again. I never damaged anything and left everything as it was. I never took anything from that house until one day. I was drawn to an old green woven clothes hamper in very good condition. And since I needed one at home, I took it. No one would miss it, right? Now I had made a connection. Bad move. So after I took this hamper, I had a dream. Or was it a dream? A figure in a dark hooded cloak approached me and said, Can I come into you and finish out the living of the rest of my life? I replied, If I do, then... What do I can to live out the rest of my life? And the figure disappeared and I woke up. Creepy, huh? 
I do believe that hamper was the catalyst for this event. I should not have taken anything. <laughs> Thou shall not steal. There's always a reason for his commandments. The next time I went to the house, I had been completely demolished. The house and all of the outbuildings were gone. There was absolutely no trace it had anything was ever there. Not a brick, not a board, not even the foundation. The root cellar had been filled in completely. I was devastated to wonder how and why did they do this. The house was safe and could have been sold. I had been going there two and three times a week, so I don't know how this was accomplished so quickly. I wonder if the dream came after the destruction, but I had not known why they had done and hamper it made it possible for this spirit to come to me. I kept that hamper for a number of years and was always haunted by whatever happened there. As long as it held on to it, I could not release myself from the spirit that inhabited that house. Although I never had any more dreams, I finally did rid myself of it, though because I was hung on to it, I'd never be free. I do not remember how I disposed of it, but it wasn't until that I was finally released that it had gone on for years. I am very much more careful now when and where I go, and will still stand outside and take the time to size up the spirit of spirits connected to these old places before entering. Please, if you are out exploring and you find a place like this, do not take anything as you don't know what you are bringing home. And if you've taken anything from a house like this, get rid of it now.